Tesla CEO Elon Musk goes after President Biden at the CodeCon conference. That's right, the Battle of the Titans. U.S. Congressman Peter Welch and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here with their take on the issue. Plus, in other electric car news, three most anticipated Tesla rival models appear to be headed into their first customer hands. Two more electric pickup trucks get closer to reality. Plus, one all-electric Rolls Royce. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's get to our top story. And Elon Musk has gone after the President of the United States, Joe Biden, during his interview at the CodeCon 2021 when asked about the tweet he posted a few days earlier. And here's what he had to say. You know, like Biden held this uh, EV summit. Um, didn't invite Tesla. Um, invited um, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and UAW. Navy summit on the White House. Um, didn't mention Tesla once, and praised GM and Ford for leading the EV revolution. So you were pissed. Does, does this sound, does this sound uh, maybe a little biased uh, or something? Um, so, um, and then, you know, just. Uh, not the friendliest administration. Well, I don't, I don't, yeah. Seems to be controlled by the unions, as far as I can tell. So, are you waiting to get Trump back? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, as much as I'm not a fan of Elon taking shots at anybody who is not Team Tesla, this one was not only well-deserved, but also very important to call BS on. And I'm glad Elon did. Now, for those of you who have missed the bigger story, let me catch you up really quick. A couple of months ago, President Biden has invited the big three, Ford, General Motors, and what now is Stellantis, to the White House, along with the head of the United Auto Workers Union, to talk about electric cars that those big three are making very few of right now, and even fewer that are not on fire. Tesla and pretty much all other American electric car startups were not invited, which was kind of weird because it's like making an electric Hummer and not hiring someone who has converted his gas Hummer into electric like Arnold Schwarzenegger as a spokesperson, but instead hiring someone who has kept driving his gas-guzzling Hummer carefree like LeBron James. But th that would be crazy. Oh. The reason for Tesla being snubbed from the White House's EV summit was pretty obvious, and it's because Tesla workers do not belong to the United Auto Workers Union or any union for that matter, and that made the whole thing about politics rather than American-made electric cars. Now, I have to admit that I once was part of a union, but I got out. It was close call. Now, the vice president of the United Auto Workers Union, Cindy Estrada, whose Twitter account, Header Graphics, is apparently on a union strike, has fired back at Elon, telling him to stop whining because good leaders aren't afraid of smart workers. Which is ironic, because back in 2017, it was reported that Estrada was a target in the FBI probe of corporate union corruption. Now, quick question, Cindy. By smart workers, do you mean those who don't get caught while misappropriating the money of the very people they're supposed to be helping? Asking for a friend. Now, there was one thing that Elon did get wrong in what he said. Let me tell you what it was. But before that, a quick reminder that this video was brought to you by NeoCharge. Check out the smart splitter from NeoCharge. You can charge two cars at the same time without spending a ton of money on rewiring your home. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. And by Climate Exchange, the Tesla raffle is back. You can win a Tesla of your choice, but only 5,000 tickets will be sold. Get yours using a link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. So to be fair, one thing that Elon did get wrong was the suggestion that Biden was praising GM 
IBM and Ford for leading the EV revolution. He was actually suggesting uh, something that is true, and that's the fact that we are very much behind China on electrification, and we better do something about it. Right now, China is leading the race. It is one of the largest and fastest growing electric vehicle markets in the world. That is something I can get behind on, and the co-author of one of the better EV federal tax credit renewal bills, Congressman Peter Welch, is on the same page with that as well. Why do you think we still need the incentives for electric car purchases? I'll tell you why. We really want to accelerate adoption. That requires mm -hmm. that we make it affordable. And we also want to accelerate implementation so that our car manufacturers are going to be the center of electric, electrical vehicle manufacturing in the world. As much as I appreciate the opinions of Elon Musk, Congressman Welch and President Biden, one man's opinion matters to me even more. And it is one of the Forbes contributor, the host of State of Charge YouTube channel and a man who's never owned a gas guzzling Hummer, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, uh, you and me uh, are not always crazy about Elon speaking out like this, but uh, do you think this is a, this was actually the right time uh, and the right message for him to send to the administration? So, yeah, we do. We are critical every now and then of Elon. He, he speaks his mind. And, and on one hand, you have to respect that. And, uh, you know, right time, wrong time. He has every right to, to make a statement like this. And, you know, in, in this uh, particular instance, I do think it was appropriate for him to let everybody know kind of how he feels about this. What about the way he does it, right? I mean, this was part of an interview and, you know, he was still was a kind of a snarky remark. Do you think maybe there's a better way of maybe, you know, producing a press release, for example, uh, you know, you have to get a PR department for that. But, you know, something that uh, becomes a bigger statement, a bigger message that more media outlets can get behind and actually get the administration to at least address this. No, actually, I think it was just fine the way he did it. I prefer it over a tweet, actually. That's usually how he communicates. At least this was in an interview. I don't see any problem with it. They don't need to issue a press release his point is is well made. Everybody understands his position. And I think for the most part, most people uh, agree with him and think that, you know, this probably isn't the best thing for electrification right now to try to pick winners the way it appears the uh, administration is doing with crafting the tax credit to, you know, favor certain automakers. What do you say to people who say, listen, you know, Compared to the last couple of administrations, Democratic or Republican, this is still going to be a huge, huge step forward for electric cars if this whole bill passes. Who cares about little caveats here and there? So, yeah, you know, we've been long saying that the, the federal tax credit for electric vehicles needs to be overhauled. Uh, you know, the number one is I hope it gets turned into a point of sale rebate. Um, but let's put that aside for now. Yeah, it's it's good that the Biden administration has picked this up and the first ones to say, look, we need to to bring that modernize it and bring it into, you know, current electric vehicle standards. So I, I, I appreciate that they're doing that. But the whole thing with favoring the unions, in my opinion, is unfortunate. Look, every administration has their donors. It's clear that the unions helped Biden get elected. And that's it's payback time. It's this is nothing new. It works this way with all the presidents depends on depending on on who your big donors are. Now, actually, the next story I wanted you ch to chime in into as well, uh, you know, Rivian uh, R1T truck, uh, GM's Hummer EV and Lucid Air all had big media drives that you went to uh, all of them. And I went to none. So this is this will be very interesting to find out your opinion. But is there, I mean, these three are pretty big as far as the new kids on the block uh, in an electric vehicle scene. But uh, is there, uh, there, there were a lot of na naysayers uh, throughout the last couple of years about them. Uh, is there any doubt in your mind that any of these vehicles will not actually be delivered to their customers before the end of this quarter? So, yeah, no, I, I don't have any doubt. Uh, these, these vehicles are all going into production. Some of them are in production already. Rivian's already produced uh, customer delivery cars. They just haven't delivered them yet. 
Uh, while I was at the Lucid factory in Casa Grande, they began customer production and the vehicles were rolling off the production line. I saw them. Uh, and GM, I don't think we have any reason to think GM won't deliver on their promise. They're an established automaker that they know the ropes. They, they know how to build uh, electric vehicles. So I don't see any reason to believe that the Hummer EV isn't going to uh, uh, be delivered on time. As I said, I drove them one. My, my, I, I drove one. My driving impressions are still under embargo, so I can't talk about that. But I did drive. I can say I did drive it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I would imagine they're all going to be delivered by the end of this quarter for sure. We're going to see customer deliveries on all three of those vehicles. And it's a good thing for the industry because I think that um, it adds uh, a different aspect to this electrification and the electric vehicle uh, community because we have these all-wheel drive vehicles that we really haven't had before. Lucid brings a super long range luxury premium electric vehicle to market. So the good thing about this is we're getting new electric vehicles, not just the same old thing. And that's that's good for the industry. If you want to check out Tom's in-person reviews of Lucid Air, Rivian R1T and Hummer EV trucks, all you have to do is subscribe to his channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. Before we get to the next story, uh, let's check out the grumpy comment of the week. Uh, this one comes from Daniel Varadi. He says, Alex, I love your channel and your content, but you really should ignore or at least don't acknowledge the non-constructive negative comments or as i call them comments now first of all yes this is a grumpy comment of the week about grumpy comments of the week the matrix of the youtube comment section secondly uh, thank you for being a regular viewer daniel and yes i agree i should not be featuring comments that disagree with me or tell me to do things opposite of what i'm doing now you know what i'm gonna stop doing it as a matter of fact i'm gonna stop doing that right about i am back now let's talk about the story that tom has already got us started on which is the three most anticipated electric vehicles for many years now seem to be headed into customer hands and thus no longer can be called vaporware Let's talk about all three. Rivian has opened up their factory to the media and let journalists finally drive the R1T truck same week as they have announced that their very first production truck intended for customer delivery has been produced. But despite Rivian changing its delivery time frame three times now, I have not heard of any first deliveries yet, which were promised by the end of last month. And then Lucid said, hey, 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 hey. What about us? We're a cool kid on a block too. So they too held a factory tour along with the test drives from media, investors, and first customers. Lucid promised that customer deliveries will start this month and 520 Lucid Air sedans will be delivered by the end of the year. Bonus points if you know why such odd number 520 and if you do, Put that in the comment section of this video. Finally, GM also held a media event, which I've heard was on fire. Too soon? But as Tom mentioned, this Hummer EV event is under embargo, which means nobody can talk about it until Monday. But I can tell you that the thing that impressed the majority of attending journalists the most was the insane 0 to 60 launch given the enormous weight of the truck at over 9,000 pounds. There are other brand new EV models that may start deliveries before the end of the year, but these three will make it very exciting going into the 2022. Now, while I was taping this video, I got another great electric car news. Apparently, while Elon was talking smack about Biden administration, he has actually accomplished something else in between. Tesla has delivered a new record of 241,300 cars in the third quarter. Not sure if anyone is surprised anymore, really, even though the chip shortage has been a huge challenge for Tesla and the rest of the auto industry. But kudos to Tesla for showing everyone how it's done once again. Lordstown Motors is supposed to deliver their first electric truck endurance before the end of the year, but the new automaker has indicated uh, they've been having some cash flow issues 
as their CEO has stepped down. So what is the best way to make sure that your factory starts producing your vehicle on time? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, you in the back. That's right, sell the factory. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but that's exactly what Lordstown Motors did. They sold their factory to the iPhone manufacturer Foxconn for $230 million plus $50 million in Lordstown shares and other stock incentives. I know what you're saying, but Alex, how are they going to produce the truck now without the factory? But get this. Foxconn will actually assemble the Lordstown Endurance and the Lordstown Motors will lease part of the factory back on a long-term basis. The deal will take about half a year to close, so I am assuming the deliveries will be pushed back once again. Another electric car startup has just unveiled their all-electric truck prototype. This time it was Atlas, showcasing the XT pickup. It kind of looks like the F-150 if you scratch the paint off of it and run its front end into a flat wall and yet its front end still looks better than BMW's monkey front butt design. The company is actually developing some very interesting battery technology and I wouldn't be surprised if they just become a battery supplier rather than an automaker, but the, the truck does look interesting and I'm rooting for these guys as well. Now, let's talk about the opposite of an electric truck, which is, no, not the Cybertruck, I'm talking about a luxury electric sedan. So let's talk about a brand we don't mention much on this channel, but is finally worth talking about. The Rolls-Royce has finally unveiled its all-electric Spectre. And by unveiled, I mean they told us they have finally figured out how to Photoshop one. There was no physical prototype presented, but Rolls-Royce claims it will start deliveries in two years plus. The entire brand will be fully electric by 2030. Don't forget to join me for my subscriber hangout live. This week we're doing it on Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. I'll have one or two cool guests. We'll answer your questions and talk about a couple of cool topics. So don't forget to set a reminder inside the announcement on my homepage. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged. Take it